example, I would like to talk about probability distribution of a continuous random variable. So speaking of continuous random variable, let's take a look at a discrete random variable first, because we discussed that in the previous lesson. So let's bring it bring it back right now, and then we can make a comparison between discrete and continuous. So for discrete random variable x, every time you hear the word discrete, think about countable number of outcomes. When people say the word discrete to me, one picture that I create in my mind is I draw six dots. So do you see that there are six dots on my nose? So I draw six dots. Six dots, they are discrete. Why they are discrete? Because I can use my finger to count that there are six dots. So what other examples are good for explaining discrete random variables? So first, we wrote two fair dice and I let the x be the sum of the two face values. So the smallest face value you can get is one plus one, which is equals to two. The highest face value or the highest sum you can get is six plus six equals to 12. So six can be any value between two and 12, including two and including 12. So you can have a 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So if you use your finger to count how many distinct outcomes are there, there are 11 distinct outcomes. So there are 11 distinct sums. Every time you roll two fair dice, you will get one of them. So every single distinct outcome has its own probability. One other example can be flip two fair coins. So you let the x be the number of heads. So the smallest x you can get is no head. So which is two tail or one head, two head. So zero, one, and two. Can you get another out outcome? The answer is no. There are three outcomes only. Zero, one, and two. You cannot get anything between zero and one. You cannot get anything between one and two. So for example, you flip two fair coins, you cannot say I want to get 0 0.8 head. That is impossible, right? So x is 0, 1, and 2. 0 has its probability, 1 and 2 has its own probability. So there are three distinct outcomes. So I wrote 0, 1, and 2. You can use your finger to count 0, 1, and 2. There are three distinct outcomes. So back to the two fair dice problem, the sum, you cannot get a sum between 6 and 7, right? You cannot say I want to get a sum of... Uh, 6.9 that is impossible either 6 or 7 nothing between them so you can use your fingers to count that there are 11 this uh distinct outcomes so you can count you can use your finger to count means discrete uh, what about continuous so discrete is countable continuous is not countable which is the opposite of discrete so for continuous random variable there are infinitely many outcomes so infinite outcomes means not countable. So for continuous random variable, one picture that I use all the time is I draw a line. So when people say discrete, I draw six dots. When people say continuous, I draw a line. So in this line, do you see the green line? Can you tell me that how many dots are in there? How many dots do you see? The answer is infinitely many, right? Because a line is constructed by putting infinitely many dots together. So in this line, it is impossible to count the number of dots, but it is possible to measure the length of this line. So for continuous random variable, x is measurable, okay, measurable, but not countable. You can use a ruler to measure how long the line is, but you cannot use your finger, point at the line and then tell me how long it is. So measurable, but not countable. So for example, um, we choose a real number between 2 and 12. How many distinct outcomes are there? The answer is infinitely many. Of course, you can include number like 2, uh, 10, 11, 12. You can also include numbers like 2.001, uh, 3.1406, uh, 5.0505, those types of numbers. So as long as you phrase the uh, experience like that, any real number between 2 and 12, so once you count those decimals, the uh, number of outcomes are infinitely many. So if you count those decimals, there are infinitely many outcomes. So this is a good example of explaining continuous 
when the variable. So when you say x, you cannot say x equals to a specific outcome. You cannot say, okay, I want x to be equals to a specific outcome. That is not going to work. So when you want an x value, you have to take an interval. So let's say uh, from a minimum to a maximum. So let's say the minimum is uh, 2. I don't want to mess up that line. I will, I will draw draw another one for you. So let me uh, erase this. So let's say um, I have a line. So this starting point, and then that is the end point. So let's say this is a 2, and then this is a 12. So when you take uh, a random variable x, you can say you cannot say x equals to 6, x equals to 5. You can say x is, is between two numbers. Uh, you can pick real numbers, of course. <laughs> you can say 2.5 and 7.2, or x is between uh, 5 and 10.11, or x is between uh, 4 and 6. You don't even need to use the equal. So the equal and not equal is not important as long as, as long as x is a continuous random variable. So regarding the equal or not equal, we will practice that when we do exercise. All right. So other than this comparison, let's talk about linear versus linear equation versus linear function. So what is a linear equation? Equation means we have a left hand side equals to a right hand side. So for example, y equals to 2x plus 3 is a linear equation. So here are the names. X is called an independent variable. Y is called a dependent variable because the value of Y depends on the value of X. And I call this a linear equation because the independent variable X is raised to the first power. How do you explain the independent and dependent? Independent means you can pick whatever value you want. So let's say uh, you want to pick X equals to uh, 9. Then you plug it into the equation. So that will be 2 times 9 plus 3. So that will be 18 plus 3 equals to 11. So 11 depends on the value of x. So that's why we call y an independent y and dependent variable x an independent variable. For a linear function, the difference between a function and equation is instead of using y, we use f of x. f is the name of the function. You don't have to call that f of x. You can call that r of x, a g of x, q of x, p of x, a k of x w of x, whatever you like. So f is the name of the function. That is not f times x. This is called f of x. So function f is the name of the function and x is an independent variable. f of x is the same thing as a y. So this is a linear function because we have x raised to the first power. So if you choose an independent variable, you let x equals to 0, then you have f of 0. So on the other side, you have to replace the x with a 0 plus 3. 0 plus 3 is equals to 3. So this 3 is a y value. This y value depends on the x value. So that's why we call x an independent variable. All right. And then uh, in a continuous random variable, the probability distribution function, we have to know how to graph it. So bef before we get into that, I want to review how to graph a linear equation using the slope intercept form. So the linear equations we have in general, I call that y equals to ax plus b. So a is the slope. Slope, we need to talk about slope. And then b is an y-intercept, the y-coordinate of a y-intercept. And then uh, sometimes they don't use ax plus b. Sometimes they use mx plus b in statistics. Uh, we don't use m, we use a, but they mean the same thing. So m is the slope and then b is the y-intercept. And then we have uh, four types of slopes. Do you see the green one? The first type is going uphill. So when the line is going uphill, so this arrow means going uphill. The slope is positive. So going downhill, the slope is negative. Traveling on a horizontal line, the slope is equal to zero. And then a vertical line means the slope is undefined. So uh, in, in this chapter, we will focus on the horizontal the zero slope. So we have uh, four functions right here. So let's graph them. I will show you how to graph them. This is only a review. So you are taking a statistic class. You should know how to graph a linear function or a linear equation. This is from your prerequisite. But since we have to use this, I think it is a good idea to bring it back to give you a brief discussion. So the first one is we have f of x equals to 5 over 4 times x plus 2. So first of all, we graph the plus 2 first. So the plus 2 is 0 comma 2. This is called a y-intercept. So we plot this point 0 2. 
we plot these points first and then the phi over 4 is a slope so the phi over 4 this is a slope so we how do we analyze the slope the slope is equals to rise over 1 so rise over 1 past the past means we go up like that so that means the light is going to look like this after the graph is done so how do you go rise over 1 in this way so we run 4 units to the right and then we go 5 units up so 2 plus 5 is equals to 7 so that means this will be my reference point and then to uh, graph this line all I have to do is I connect these two points so this is the graph of the given function of course you have you can ex you have to extend this line uh, can I get one more reference point the answer is yes so for rise over one you can do the one first so you can go five units down so that will be two then that will be a four five and then you go four units to the left so that will be from zero all the way to the negative four so that gives you another reference point so you can connect them so now the line is longer right so after the job is done you can extend this line all the way down and all the way up please draw an arrow so this is the graph of y equals to 5 over 4x plus 2 so for the rise over 1 so this is the rise is equals to 5 the run is equals to 4 is there an, another way to go the answer is yes so another way to go is you go this way you can go 5 units up and then 4 units right the other point you can go 5 units left and 4 units down just like from point A to point B there are two different ways to go home you can think about like like that so that will be the first graph and then the second graph I make a typo I forgot to type the negative I want to graph negative 4 over 7 x minus 3 so let's change to a darker color because uh, it's hard to see so first you graph the the negative 3 the minus 3 so that will be 0 negative 3 so 0 negative 3 is a point down here and then this is a negative slope going downhill that is going downhill and then the negative 4 over 7 is a rise over run after you finish the line the line should go downhill so how do we how how do we do this so the rise is 4 the run is 7 so this is how I do it I will run 7 units to the right and then four units down so that gets to my next reference point uh, if you want to go to the left hand side that that's fine you go four units up so that will be three that will be four and then you go seven units to the left so that will be your next reference point and then you sketch a straight line of course it's a straight line you have to keep the line straight so this is the graph of the linear function uh, by the way the, the dash line the dash line is not part of the function I I'm trying to show you how to trace the next point right the dash line they are not part of the linear function and then we have to extend that a little bit so we extend that to the left draw an arrow and then we extend that to the right draw an arrow so the job is and then the next one we have a 0x plus 4 so the slope this time is equals to 0 the slope is the coefficient of x by the way the number in front of x that is called the slope because sometimes uh, people can put the question like this so y equals to you uh, let's say 4 plus 0x the previous problem they can put a problem like this y equals to you 2 plus 5 over 4x and then this one they can do y equals to ne negative 3 minus 4 over 7x just keep in mind that the slope is the number in front of the variable the independent variable so this one is a zero slope we will need that a lot in a uniform distribution so zero slope means you have a horizontal line so that is just y equals to 4 so y equals to 4 is right here right that is the y axis that is the x axis so y equals to 4 you just have to give me a horizontal line so that represent y is equals to 4 low, low slope is a flat horizontal line and then the last one is x equals to 5 so you don't even see the y so that is a clearly a vertical line vertical line has undefined slope so undefined slope so x equals to 5 is right there right so to draw a vertical line we go like that and that then there you go it's a vertical line so uh, for driving you can't drive on the vertical line right that is impossible uh, you can drive on a horizontal line okay you just let uh, 
let the brake go, the car will either move forward or backward, right? just like on a flat line. And then the negative slope, you let the brake go, the line will go downhill. And then uh, for the passive slope, you have you cannot just let the brake go, you have to let go of the brake and then you have to press the gas so the car will go up. All right, so that is the review of the four types of slope. And then in uh, the next lesson, which is a whole uh, uniform distribution, we will need the horizontal line a lot. So I just mentioned the word uniform distribution, uniform distribution. We mentioned that when at the first time when we discuss what distribution is. All right. So uniform distribution. So still remember this histogram. Uniform distribution. This uh, histogram stands for uniform distribution because every single bar has the same height. All right, but uh, in a, a continuous random variable, this is what we have to do. So let's say I give you a, a equation or a function. So let's say we do a y equals to one half x, and then I want the x between zero and ten. How do you graph this? So you do you go like that. So this is a y axis. This is the x axis. And then x equals to zero, x equals to ten, y equals to oh sorry, no no x, just y equals to one half. So that means y is always equals to one half. We say that is a one half. So at one half we have a zero. At uh at, at zero we have a point. At the, at ten we have a point. This is y equals to a constant value. Y equals to one half. So that means y is always one half, not going down, uh, not going down, not going up. So we just saw. A horizontal line. So what if I give you another one? So this time I want to use the same function. I want to say that uh, the x is between a uh, 2 and a uh, 13.5. Then you go like this. So you draw a vertical axis and then a horizontal axis. At 2 you make a mark. At 13.5 you make a mark. So this is a uh, y equals to 1 half. And then at 2 we have a point. At 13.5 we have a point. So since we only consider this, then uh, we draw a line between 2 and 13.5. So uh, uh, this one, the inequality in circle, what is this called? We call this a domain. Uh, what is a domain? Domain means x lives between a number and then another number. So x lives between two numbers. So in a function, the algebra language, we call this domain. This is a domain of course also. And what about the y equals to one half? This y equals to one half, we call this a probability distribution function of uniform distribution. Uh, why is this called a uniform distribution? Because a uniform distribution, so let's say you take a mark at uh, 3, you take a mark at 6. So this one, do you see that the green line is not going up or down? So let's say even though we divide this into bars, every single bar has the same height. And then when you do uniform distribution, what we are interested is the area of this uh, region. So let me give you a little bit pre preview in uh, probability, in, pub in terms of probability language. When people ask you to find the probability, of using of a graph, the probability means area. Okay, so this is how we use the probability in area in uh, statistics and or the probability language. So speaking of the uniform distribution, we have a lot of exercise to do in the upcoming video. So uh, I will just uh, terminate the video at this point. If you think my instruction is helpful, please like, subscribe, and share. How was this instruction? Let me know in the comment section below. I will see you all in the next one, signing out.